Hi everyone, and welcome to another Fly Deck to Sim tutorial. I'm a 737 captain for a European airline, and this channel is all about using flight simulation to replicate real world procedures. In today's video, we'll be performing a short duration ghost flight. Now, due to the coronavirus pandemic, there's been a total collapse for demand for air travel in Europe. Now, if aircraft are not kept in long term storage, there's a requirement for them to have to be flown every seven days to maintain airworthiness. Now, additionally, pilots also need to complete three takeoffs and landings in the previous 90 days to stay current as well. And to cater for this, some airlines roster these ghost flights, or what we call recency flights, for the dual purpose of both keeping the fleet serviceable and maintaining crew currency. Now, today we're in Bristol in the UK, and we'll be setting up for a ghost flight. And Dave, you can see, is currently filling up our aircraft with Jet A1. Now, the whole purpose of this is just to demonstrate how we go about uh, performing a ghost flight, and it's also a great way for you to practice multiple takeoffs and landings uh, for your chosen desktop simulated aircraft. Right, let's get to it. Now, the aircraft is already powered up. All I've got left to do is set up the flight management computer, and then we'll discuss the performance calculations, the routings, and we'll also be performing the flight briefings for both the SID and the arrival back here into Bristol, and we'll discuss some of the differences compared to a routine passenger flight. Now, whilst pilot flying is setting up the aircraft, the pilot monitoring has the usual responsibility of completing the walk around. Usual care will be taken, of course, to ensure there's no damage externally, uh, but also if the aircraft's been on the ground for a while, he needs to ensure that all the pitot covers are removed and also look for things like nesting birds, which are quite prevalent, especially in spring. Now, as there's no cabin crew on board the aircraft, the pilot monitoring also has to do the cabin secure uh, drill, so he'll have a look in the cabin to make sure that all the galley carts and lockers are stowed and locked, the lavatories are closed and locked, all the overhead bins are checked and also locked and closed for the sector, and we'll also arm the L1 and R1 doors just in case we do need to evacuate, but of course there's no need to do them uh, at the rear because we're not going to run to the rear of the aircraft to jump off uh, the aircraft in case of an emergency. So whilst uh, Jim, our virtual first officer, is completing the external walk around and checking the cabin is secure for departure, we'll go ahead and get everything set up for our uh, ghost flight today. Uh, so I've already done the pre-flight setup, configured the overhead panel and the rest of the aircraft. We just need to load up the flight management computer and have a look at the performance and also brief the SID, star and arrival because we'll be coming straight back here into Bristol. Uh, so here is our operational flight plan. It's exactly the way it'd be formatted in real life. It's a little note on the real flight plan to ATC saying it's a, a recency or a technical flight. You can see it has our departure and arrival point of Bristol. We only require a minimum of 2.6 tons. Now we won't usually take just that minimum requirement. We'd actually take um, a, a good chunk of fuel extra. Now at my operator we'd take 7 tons. Um, they actually say in the flight plan that it would be pre-fueled to 7 tons if not more. Um, uh, so that will already be done in this case. And you can see here on the routing information, all we've got to do is put the departure point and arrival at Bristol, the SID and the STAR both terminate at Exmoor. Now different airports would have different requirements. Uh, some would have uh, radar vector departures. We're not going to do a quick visual circuit. In fact, that's not permitted uh, unless you're a training uh, captain in that situation. So we're going to set up now everything uh, as per the flight plan. So flight management computer, latest air rack is installed. Uh, we'll put in Bristol, which is Echo Golf Golf. Uh, Delta will now put the GPS left position in here. The IRS now should be all aligned. Uh, going from Bristol uh, to Bristol for ATC, we'll just use the call sign of Alpaca uh, 01 today for our virtual airline. Uh, departing runway 09, the SID we're expecting is an Exmoor 1 Zulu, which is selected. We can now go to the route page. We don't need to actually put any of the routing information in, so we don't need to go to the route page because the uh, Exmoor is the beginning of the arrival uh, back here into Bristol. The arrival is going to be an ADVED 1 Alpha uh, back for ILS 09. We can activate it and execute, and if you have a look here on the plan page, you'll see, look, there's a sort of a loop going on here where we depart from Bristol uh, on the Exmoor 1 Zulu and then it goes all the way out here back onto the arrival. Now what's going to happen and exactly what would happen in real life, you will depart on that SID but at some point uh, downwind on the SID you'd be transferring to radar vectors uh, back in for the approach for ILS 09. 
So now we've loaded up the flight management computer with the routing, we just need to do the performance calculations. So the zero fuel weight today is 43.1 tonnes, that is an empty aircraft, uh, just the pilot and co-pilot, no passengers at all. We'll discuss the kind of performance differences between an empty and a typically uh, loaded aircraft with a load of passengers. Now if you have a look on the operational flight plan here, you can see the reserves are 1.5 tonnes. Now at my operator, we have a minimum reserve fuel figure of 1.8, uh, so I'm going to use that fuel figure here. And that's to actually divert to Cardiff in the event of an emergency if we can't get into Bristol. It is very unlikely we'll get down to that amount of fuel. We're taking seven tons, so we can easily sit on our hands for a couple of hours if we have any problems and decide where we need to go. Cost index we'll use is 30. We're only going to be going up to 6,000 feet today, which is the height of the SID, where the SID terminates, so we'll execute that. Um, I'm using CAVOK -okay, ISA condition, so no wind, no ISA deviation. Uh, so I'll leave that blank. I'll just put an ISA deviation of zero here. A neat little trick, you can see the transition level is 60. It's actually an altitude uh, we'll be maintaining. So if we put 6,001 feet, that will change that to 6,000 feet, which is uh, really awesome. It's exactly what we do in the real aircraft. Right, so here we have the OPT performance from the onboard performance calculator from the real aircraft. Now, unfortunately, before you ask, where do I get a copy of this? Uh, you can't. It's just a screenshot from the real OPT for the 737. And you can see here for Bristol, runway 09, uh, dry runway, uh, wind of 0, 15 degrees, QNH of 1013, uh, thrust at optimum, flat 5, air conditioning auto, anti-ice, no need to extend the performance in the event of an engine failure for obstacle clearances. So the takeoff weight of 50.1 tonnes based off our 7 tonnes of fuel on an empty aircraft. And that is showing us we could take reduced 22k with an assumed temperature of 59 degrees Celsius. You can see the V-speeds there as well. So 22k is about as much thrust as you could reduce. Uh, 59 degrees uh, Celsius. Slight discrepancy between what the mod says with 86.3 and the OPT of 83.0. I'll have a chat with Zebo, see if we can get that rectified, but at least it's higher thrust uh, required, so not much uh, at all. We'll now go to the V speeds here, flap 5. The C of G I calculated earlier is 19.4% for our empty aircraft, and the V speeds all need to be within a knot of the OPT. We've got 123, 123, 127, so they're all within the knots. They're all correct, and we just need to set V2 on the MCP, which is 127 knots uh, coming up now, and the trim, which was 5.25 units set, so 5.25 units set. So that's it. The FMS is loaded. The performance is complete. Let's now have a look at the briefings. So we're currently parked on stand one here in Bristol. We can expect pushback to face west and then we'll taxi to whole point runway 09 to hold a golf x-ray for our departure. Our SID today is going to be the Exmoor 1 Zulu for runway 09. We'll be climbing straight ahead to cross uh, 5.4 DME from India, Bravo, Oscar, November. We must be at or about 3,000 feet at that point. We'll then make a right turn to track 267 inbound to Somot stopping the climb at an altitude of 6,000 feet. Now prior to Somot, we'll be levelling off at 6,000 feet and then we'll be getting vectors back into Bristol for ILS approach runway 09. And then we'd usually stop the briefing at that point if it was a normal departure, but because of the duration of the flight, it's actually quite worthwhile setting up, if you can, for the ILS approach prior to landing. So if I bring up the, the chart here for ILS approach runway 09, we have the top of the briefing strip, the ILS frequency is 110.15, decimal the course is a 087, and the minimums are 813 feet. Now, we can at least set the frequency in courses at this stage. So you can see here on the MCP, I have a 087 set. We just need to set 6,000 feet for the SID stop altitude as well, which is now set. We'll imagine we've got our clearance. And you can see already on the pedestal, I have the ILS frequencies of 110.15 decimal. Uh, one five tuned. So setting, uh, setting up for the rest of the approach, we can at least uh, brief it. We can see we have a platform altitude of 2,500 feet and we'll intercept the ILS at uh, a DME of 5.8 miles based off that platform altitude and then we'll go down to our minimum. So we've at least covered the basics of the approach. When we're in flight, all we need to do is set the minimums on the PFD, uh, step through the FMS, make sure we're happy with everything and brief the missed approach actions and the missed approach. So essentially, there isn't much difference between a normal flight and this ghost or recency flight. Um, this the things we've discussed, really. A few other differences is that the APU would have been started nice and early. 
if the aircraft has been on the ground for a long time especially that that might have been done by the engineers before you get to the aircraft or you might have to do it uh, as flight crew as well and that's just to make sure the APU is fully serviceable we get it pumping conditioned air to the cabin nice and early and if there's any problems we can then contact the engineering nice and early to get it rectified as well main difference then is that the aircraft performance will be significantly higher than it would be for normal operations. Now we've mitigated against that by selecting a reduced thrust setting with assumed temperature of 59 degrees Celsius which will help with the performance of the climb out and the air aircraft does handle a little bit differently, it's a little bit more sprightly but we'll discuss that on this flight today and additionally when we start the engines as well we have to check for something called engine drain fuel leaks which are more prevalent if the engines haven't been ran in a while. Essentially the ground crew will call out if they can see any fuel leaking from the engine it sounds pretty serious but it's not a big issue uh, we just simply shut the engine down restart it and if the leak continues after five minutes we have to return uh, to stand for maintenance action but if it stops within that period of time we can continue normal operation right i'm going to get the aircraft uh pushed back engine started taxi to the holding points and you can join me at the hold point runway 09 and we'll have a, a nice little 10 minute jolly uh, around bristol Right, so now at the whole point here, runway 09, we're pretty much ready for departure. We just need to complete the before takeoff checklist. So uh, check the config warning horn earlier. Flaps we have five with five and green light. Lower D, you should be blanked as well. Uh, stab trim set for departure, 5.25 units set. Our takeoff briefing, check the overhead panel. Packs are in auto. The bleeds are on. The V speeds are set for departure, one, two, three. 123, 127, and that is set on the MCP. The SID is going to be the Exmoor 1 Zulu, so climbing straight ahead, and then we're going to make a right turn inbound to Somot. Stop altitude is 6,000 feet set on the MCP. If there's any problems, we'll climb straight ahead to the MSA, uh, which is 3,000 feet, and uh, diagnose the problem, and then we'll go from there. And we're now ready for departure. So I'll imagine we've contacted ATC. They're fully aware of our flight today. They've cleared us initially on our uh, SID on the export mod Zulu and we're cleared to uh, take off runway 09 wind is calm so lights are on strobes can come on as now uh, come on now as well uh, order throttle to uh, arm LNAV and transponder to TARA and then we'd also select the weather radar on so we'd confirm read back with the first officer and we've been cleared for takeoff for runway 09 and uh, yeah we'll get lined up and then we'll take off for runway 09 on the sit and then come straight back to bristol
So just before we take off, MCP is set, transponder is in TARA, strobe lights are on, and landing lights are on, being cleared for takeoff, surface wind is calm, uh, we'll get the aircraft lined up. So, we're very light today, uh, well as light as you can be with two pilots and seven tons of fuel. Um, the V speeds as you saw earlier were a lot less than we can expect here. The rotation rate though is exactly the same regardless of uh, the weight, we'll rotate at uh, VR 2 to 2.5 degrees per second. The aircraft will be really wanting to get off the ground as well as it's so light and then we'll smoothly rotate to initial target pitch, pitch altitude of around 15 degrees and then follow the flight directors and then we'll clean up as usual but you'll see even with the thrust reduced with an assumed temperature of 59 degrees it will really have a lot of performance available one of the reasons i love the SIBO mod as well it's very representative of the the uh, light aircraft in real life when you're lighting the uh, the mod as well right we'll uh, stand the thrust levers up to 40 percent we'll start the timer as well looking for around 40 percent stabilized push toga as set take off the thrust as usual uh, light forward pressure on the control column. Target end one is 86.3%. There we are. Take off thrust sets. Indications are normal. 80 knots. That's checked. Releasing the forward pressure. Just using rudders of 8 8 cents line. Don't need hardly any with no wind. Uh, up we go. 2 to 2.5 two degrees per second. And we're airborne. And gears coming up onto the flight directors. Now if you're very light and they command more than 20 degrees nose up, we always limit the attitude uh, to 20 degrees in that case. There's 400 feet. We can verify LNAV. Uh, we're just waiting for a thousand feet above aerodrome level to engage the autopilot all nicely trimmed what out. Does? That's it, Command A, and then we can straight away bug the up speed. And you can note uh, how the up speed is already so low because we're light. Only 190 knots today. So above V2 plus 15, we can select flaps 1. And you can already see, even accelerating here, still doing 1600 feet per minute. And above the 1 bug, we can select flaps up. And imagine Bristol uh, Towers handed us over to uh, Cardiff Radar for uh, our vectors initially. Uh, we'll be staying on the SID though until we get to 6,000 feet. So there's flaps up, no lights. We're already doing, look at that, 4,000 feet per minute. So we'll select vertical speed. Uh, 2,000 feet per minute because we have two to go here and we'll bug something a little bit more sensible for vectors so 220 knots and as I said the flaps are up no lights so uh, we'll do the after takeoff checklist gears off order brakes off we're climbing to an altitude so we'll stay on the QNH of 1013 we'll still check the air conditioning and pressurization and that is 1.9 climbing and the aircraft is configured as we like it as well and then once we've done that flow have a little look here it has the checklist as we need to, to check here so air conditioning and pressurization That's sets uh, edge of start switches are off landing gear is off water brake is off as well flaps up nights uh, up no lights and altimeters check the QH is 1013 uh, climbing to 6,000 feet don't, don't forget to slow that rate to set down to a thousand feet per minute to want to go as well and that's it the after takeoff checklist is complete and uh, we're turning on the SID and that will position us quite nicely uh, downwind for our vectored approach back into Bristol So now we're inbound to Somop, imagine Bristol Radar have come back to us and said, okay, Alpaca 01, uh, radar vectors for an ILS approach back here, uh, runway 09 to Bristol, maintain a heading of 270 degrees, and that's engaged with heading select. And we can now start modifying the FMS ready for our approach back into Bristol. So we'd hand over controls to pilot monitoring in this case here. I'm going to go straight to the legs page, route direct to the center fix. Uh, bring that to the top and execute that straight away, tidying up the FMS and ND. We can tidy it up further. You can already see we're approaching top of the centre as well. Uh, we're going to bring the uh, waypoint to the south of the centre fix. So we're going to go centre fix here, uh, 180 slash 3. Bring that to the top, then the centre fix and execute. 
and there we go, we've got a nice little base leg point and you can see the VNAV profiles already coming towards us. So I imagine we've got our descent as well and you can see how quickly things are happening. So I imagine Alpaca 01 descend maintain uh, 3000 feet, so 3000 feet is set. I'm just going to select vertical speed initially and set a descent rate around 1500 feet per minute so we'll already bring the speed back to uh, 200 knots and we'll just monitor everything making sure the speed doesn't run away. In fact we'll just shallow off that descent a little bit further to around 1000 feet per minute. Perfect, so setting up for the rest of the approach let's select runway 09 to the fixed page. We'll put in a 10 mile ring and a, far, a four mile ring for situational awareness and we've already briefed the approach. We're already happy with how we're going to uh, fly it. We, all we need to do here is, if we bring up the approach chart here uh, to show you, uh, where is it? I'm having to select it on a separate panel here so I can view it, but there you are. Here it is in the tutorial. Uh, we've got the frequencies and the uh, courses all tuned. All we need to do is set the minimums, which for the ILS approach is 813 feet. So that's coming up uh, now on the barrow minimums. There we go, that is now tuned, we already briefed it, just the actions you've had for missed approach, checking the FMS, it's all correct there. I'll push Toga, call go around flat 15, set go around for us, pause radar climb, gear up 400 feet, I'll select um, heading select, we'll climb straight ahead to 3000 feet, nice and simple um, missed approach here. So I've just gone to level change, the aircraft is now going to pitch to maintain 200 knots, so we just need to do the landing performance, so looking here in the FMS, uh, we're going to be burning 200 kilos, that's going to be 49.2 for our landing weight, which we'll put here. We'll bring up the landing performance calculator, uh, which is here, uh, landing in runway 09 at landing weight was 49.2, 49.2, let's see if we can land with flat 30, we should be at this very light weight. Uh, yes, look, flat 30, order break 3. That's fine to make the exit on runway 09 in Bristol. Uh, that's going to be Bravo. So we'll select that in the FMS now. So flap uh, 30 is selected. Order break 2. And that's it. We're all now ready for the approach. So it all happens very quickly. Uh, I'll imagine ATC will give us a vector in around a minute or so for our base leg. And then we'll continue configure uh, for the approach and landing. So imagine now Alpaca 01 turn right heading 360 degrees base leg for ILS 09. So there is 360 degrees. We can select a flap 1 as well. I want to be doing no more than 180 knots on uh, base leg. That's the kind of ICAO recommended speeds. That's checked as well. We'll go to the legs page and just route the center fix direct. And that'll again give us some uh, basic VNAV guidance to follow using vertical speed as well. Well imagine we've got further descent down to 2,500 feet. So flap one selected on base leg just like a normal approach but you can already see look at the V speeds considerably lower than you, uh, the V speed sorry the uh, the flat placard speeds you can already see they're considerably lower than they would be for a normally uh, weighted aircraft. Now if we had 150 plus passengers our gross weight would be around 60 tons uh, that'd be a typical landing weight. Our gross weight at the moment is 10 tons less than that, so that makes a big difference. Let's give ourselves our final approach heading of around 045 degrees. We'll imagine being cleared approach as well. We'll select a flat 5, match the flat 5 placard speeds, and we'll arm approach, and there we are. The glide slope's coming in nicely. The localizer will come in next. So there's localizer alive, a thousand feet to go is checked, the glide slope's alive as well, so localizer is now captured. We can select runway heading, which is 087, and we'll just revert to vertical speed, nice little technique, VS to finesse, you can just use vertical speed to recapture the glide slope as we were, uh, you know, in level change at that point there. So just slightly below the glide slope, but uh, if we set 500 feet per minute, uh, we should get glide slope capture prior to out to quiet 2,500 feet. And once we're all established, we'll then just continue to four miles, which is our configuration point uh, in VMC today. Uh, there's glide slope capture, so checking the missed approach altitude on the chart and also the FMS. We go here to the legs page, you can see it's 3,000 feet, and 3,000 feet is now set on the MCP.
So approaching four miles, you can see we're sat here quite nicely at the flat five speeds uh, of 150 knots. The aircraft is completely stable. We'll start configuring now, so gear down, uh, flap 15, match the flap 15 speed. We'll now do the landing checklist to flaps. So, start switches are continuous, recall is checked, speed brake, arm green light, landing gear down 3 green, order brake is set to 2. We can now select the landing flap, which was flap 30. I think it was order brake 3, once it apologies, that was my... Miss, uh, miss selecting the, the landing order brake set, uh, setting there. So flap uh, 30 selected, so 30, 30 green light. Well, imagine we've got our landing clearance as well. Uh, so taxi light on and the landing checklist is complete. So we can now disconnect. So disconnecting the autopilot, disconnecting the auto throttle, and now we're hand flying. And there's a thousand feet checked. So again, uh, hand flying such a light aircraft, it feels very similar, but um, it, it does feel the best way of describing it. It's lighter. Uh, little movements and inputs, you feel uh, an instant response from the aircraft. There's not as much sluggish as, sluggishness as there would be with a, a heavy aircraft. But uh, apart from that, the approach is completely normal. Uh, during the flare as well, there will be a tendency for the aircraft to float, especially if you're carrying a little bit of excessive speed. We're fully stabilised as well here, uh, approaching minimum. So Five, make sure you're not going too fast and make sure you don't hold off that flare as well. Get it nicely uh, touched down in the Four, touchdown zone. Three. Minimums. That's uh, minimum, so continue, we're fully stabilised, just a tad high, so just to increase that rate of descent ever so slightly. There we go, back on profile. Keep it descending now. 50, 40, 30, 20, Check. 10, Close. Don't hold it off too much. And there we are, nice and firm in the touchdown. So, speed breaks up, and we we'll select reverses, and we'll go for second D10 reverse. There's 100 knots. 80 knots. 80 knots. Manual braking. There's 60 knots. We'll go to idle reverse and we'll take the next exit on the left. There we are, so you can see the performance was much uh, better than expected, vacating at Delta X-Ray. Uh, we'll now continue to where we were parked, uh, stand uh, number one, the cleanup, as uh, normally completed by the first officer, as usual. And I'll meet you on stand, and we'll debrief and uh, conclude the tutorial there. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the 10-minute recency ghost flight tutorial. I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. I'll be popping this in my full flight tutorial playlist, and don't forget you'll find loads of useful 737 playlists on my YouTube homepage. As always, a massive thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest content. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you for another live stream or tutorial very soon. Bye-bye for now.